As it stands right now, we are only a few days away from the release of Rockstar's new GTA Online Bottom Dollar Bounties DLC update, and this update is bringing several new police, bail enforcement, and bounty hunter style missions. Of course, we have some new DLC vehicles, some police variants, and some normal civilian versions of cars. We have a plethora of different quality of life changes coming, including some business changes, vehicle tunings, and even more gameplay changes and updates like new game modes and tools for the creator. We have, of course, premium in-game features that are going to be coming that I know everyone's going to be excited about, and this is also about the time when the community loves to come together and speculate on how much this DLC will cost, and how much in-game money players will need if they want to purchase and acquire everything that this update has to offer on day one, but today I want to take that idea a little bit of a step further here. Sure, we'll briefly touch on my predictions for the necessary as well as total cost of this DLC, but I really just want to talk generally here with you all and discuss what players should really do before the new bottom dollar bounty these update releases in game. While saving your money before a new DLC releases is of great importance here, if you haven't played in a while or if you're just not caught up with all of the news, there's actually a few purchases I think players should make here, and overall just a few things that players should do in advance to prepare besides just waiting around for it to release. And we'll also talk about some tips on how to maximize these final few days in game before that DLC update drops. And so with all that said, let's get started with things. So first, I want to talk about number one, which I think is just kind of a good idea in general. I think a lot of players will already own one, but if you don't have one already, may actually be a good idea to purchase one. Buying a police car from the Chop Shop update, whether it's the Stanier or, of course, the Gauntlet Police Interceptor, any of those vehicles, just in case we need one as a prerequisite for the bottom dollar DLC. Of course, like I talked about at the beginning, we're going to have that bail enforcement burrito, which is either going to be a requirement to use during the missions, and we're going to be forced to drive that around, or maybe if these missions just start up, that will be the vehicle that spawns outside of the bottom dollar bounties HQ. But I would imagine if we're going to be bringing targets back to the bail enforcement headquarters alive, we're going to need to throw them in the back of that bail enforcement van. But either way, I don't think it's going to hurt to own a cop car just in case. And it's likely that, you know, of course, the new DLC police cars that release, you can use during the police cruiser missions that we're going to be able to do for Vincent and things like that, but we'll probably be able to use the Stanier, either the unmarked cruiser or the other Stanier that released in GTA Online with the Chop Shop update, or of course the Gauntlet Police Interceptor, and then those newer DLC vehicles, whether it's the newer Police Impaler SZ, the newer Police Bravado Dorado, the newer Police Bravado Greenwood, or any other ones, say if we get like a GTA 4 styled Vapid Stanier as well, I feel like that would be pretty cool to see in this DLC, but if you don't own any of the police vehicles in this game thus far you know maybe check in game see if you have the trade prices for them unlocked i feel like they're pretty easy challenges to complete to get the trade price in the first place so i think if you've been playing since the past dlc update and of course you're excited for the new one then you probably should have the trade price and you'll definitely be able to get that nice discount on the full retail value of one of those cars i know that kind of goes against what i recommend players save their money but that is definitely one purchase i think players should make also of course i think it's very important here to take advantage of this week's money bonus just to grind some extra cash for the new update. The Dr. Dre week last week was probably the singular week that set everyone up nice and good for the DLC if they didn't have the money beforehand, but don't forget about this week's money bonuses. Not that they're that great, but we do have triple money and RP on all drag races in the game, all drift races, the new community series jobs, double money and RP on the wildlife photography activity, so $200,000 in less than 10 minutes versus just the normal 100 k and then double money from the daily salvage yard income in your wall safe, so basically every 48 minutes, real life, or one in-game day, you're going to be making $48,000 in your wall safe instead of the usual $24,000 as long as you're staying on top of the tow truck missions, because remember, doing the tow truck missions and just doing a, a couple every few hours will keep you at that maximum wall safe money deposited bonus it'll bolster your wall safe money that way you can actually get that maximum amount right there not that that's going to make a game changing amount of money for you in the meantime but it is just something to stay on top of if you're already going to be playing the game this week. I would also recommend that players make sure their MC businesses are stocked up with product that's ready to sell for when the DLC releases. As you guys know, the timers are getting adjusted on some of the more harder, more challenging, and maybe even the impossible MC business deliveries for solo players. Think about it with the Dune FAVs for the bunker, where you have the four of those to deliver. That one's really hard as a solo player. Then, of, of course, you have the post-op vans. That's basically impossible for a solo player at this point. They just drive way too slow, and there's way too many delivery destinations to get to. Oh, you know, of course, we all know there's an argument to be made with the sale vehicles themselves and the fact that I think a better way of going about this is Rockstar should just reduce the total number of sale vehicles required to at least make those more 
challenging and more impossible business deliveries for solo players, at least achievable in the first place. You know, give us one, two, maybe three delivery vehicles, absolutely max, because I would argue the sale times are the real problem. Not only is it just too much work for a player to do in the time allotted, but the sale times just take way too much time in general. Even if you had a longer timer, say, you know, now it's a half hour, they'll increase it to 45 minutes or double the time to one hour. Do you really want to spend an hour driving around really slow vehicles? Not that it would take you that long, but just for the fact that the post op vans could take you 35, almost 40 minutes at that point. Of, it's way too long. Instead of allowing players more time to actually complete the sale, just give us less vehicles. It doesn't seem like we're going to be so lucky, but at least make sure your business product is stocked up. But also recommend to check in on Red Dead Online's Bounty Hunter role, see how that role works, as well as look into the Grand Theft Auto 4 and previous GTA games and their police cruiser missions. We may see a lot of overlap in between the Bounty Hunter role with Red Dead and of course the GTA DLC and those previous police cruiser missions maybe not with the bail enforcement business but the police work that we're going to be doing for Vincent that Rockstar alluded to things like that you know they won't be one-to-one -one comparisons of course I mean they are different games after all but at least you can get into this DLC with a little bit more knowledge and be more knowledgeable about what Rockstar has done in the past with similar content themes things like that. I think owning some other vehicles would be pretty good as well, like purchasing some type of armored vehicle, whether it's going to be in a Monty Tech vehicle like the Omnis EGT, the Ocelot Virtue, you know, those are really just good because of their armor plating and the missile lock on jammers. You know, maybe an HVY Night Shark would be a good bonus. That'll provide substantial protection against enemy gunfire and explosives, high durability, pretty good firepower with the front method machine guns, good survivability in case you're taking down a very hostile target in one of these missions, you're going to want some type of armored vehicle if Rockstar is going to let you use it. Of course, you're going to get mission versatility with some of these vehicles as well. Not only is it going to be useful for this DLC, but any other content in the game. A powerful aircraft would probably be a good choice as well, whether players choose the F-160 Raiju, you can get the Hydra, the Besra, the Joe Built P-996 Laser, the Buckingham Pyro, the Avenger, things like that. You can even go so far as getting a Western Company Rogue or an Alpha Z1. Not that those are that fantastic, but they are there if you want them. Sell your business stock for the nightclub, Acid Lab, Bunker, etc. If you want to make some extra money before the DLC, at least don't forget this is going to be your reminder. And maybe make some extra money fast and easy doing your Cayo Perico that you'd normally keep up with, Dr. Drake contract, payphone hits, like I said, the Acid Lab sales, all your daily activities, stash houses, G's caches, time trials, things like that. And also another reminder, don't forget to claim the Gratia Tally GTO through this week's top tier vehicle gangbanger salvage yard robbery. Definitely something you want to do. Collect money from your wall safe, the agency, the nightclub, the arcade, your salvage yard, and more. And kind of with all that said, I think that's probably where we'll wrap up right here. That is basically everything I think players should consider doing before the new GTA Online bottom dollar bounties DLC update releases. I think if you make sure to acquire, you know, some police vehicle, I think a lot of players already have one already, but if you're brand new to the game, maybe you can make that a goal. Some type of armored vehicle and a good aircraft, you know, all that type of stuff. Keep all those other good tips and tricks in mind. You'll surely be good to go for everything that awaits you with the bounties update because I think it's going to be a pretty good one. I hope the replayability is enjoyable as well, but we'll have to see come Tuesday. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video here today. And if you did, hopefully I earned your like on it. And of course, if you are new to my channel and you want to stay up to date with all the best GTA Online, Red Dead Online, and Rockstar Games content, then please consider hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss out on a single thing we post here on the channel. We consistently talk about updates, news, information, tips, tricks, and even leaks, and we'll keep you guys updated here on the channel daily. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you'd like to follow me over on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected with me outside of YouTube and you're more than welcome to ask any questions on those platforms. You can follow me at Hazardous HDTV and all of my social media links can be found in the description down below. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching everyone. Hopefully you all have a fantastic day and I will see you guys in the next GTA 5 online video. Adios amigos.